Hi, my name is Deborah Bottomley, and or Deborah L. Bottomley, I should say, is the art, artist's name. Um, I'd like to thank Blackstone Valley Art Association and the Menden Cultural Council for this uh, this day in our what we're going to do. I I'm going to do a little bit of a um, watercolor demo using Miss Menden Diner as my um, subject. And uh, earlier when Lisa and I were talking about this, uh, it was back in October and the Blackstone Valley Art Association in Uxbridge, Mass. Um, very active group, very ongoing, always something going on. And uh, the person in charge of this filming right now is the person the reason all of this is available to us in this area, and we're fools to not take <laughs> take advantage of it. And um, anyway, uh, we in October, Blackstone Valley Art Association was uh, doing a theme of sketching, and so this is how we're going to approach painting Miss Menden Diner is more with a sketch or I, I'm calling it a cartoon. I, when I work with the uh, ink, just uh, freehand like that, I, I tell myself I'm doing a little cartoon. And I'm going to also show you a couple things that you can do with, with the um, diner. We had this uh, light or the, the uh, writing. And as you see now, it looks like everything is, I covered it all up with the, the red. But what I, I did is we're going to use this um, product and it's called Frisket. And it's kind of like a, a rubber cement and we're going to paint it on our paper and then uh, let that dry and then we can paint or paint over it and it'll protect those areas because then I can come back. So this is a like a gum shoe. It's a kind of a hard eraser. This is what I'm doing now. I'm pulling that frisket off. So I was able to protect my whites. Um, and also, as you paint, oops, I'm, I'm rolling off some, I had uh, some frisket up here because you do have to make sure it's totally dry before you remove it or before you paint over it. Um, you don't want to get the frisket into your brushes. Um, just, I'll come back over here. So, if there is an area that you are gonna paint in, uh, let's say it's your figures or something, but you want a wild, crazy background, once you have your drawing, you can fill in everything with the frisket. You can also remove it with your hand, but then you have to watch to make sure that you don't have oils on your fingers that would keep the paint from flowing. Um, I'm gonna throw a little more paint on this guy. Just I do have more of that, that frisket. Um, so, I did not take the um, brightest picture. I don't know if you want to. Oh, I'll, I'll put the JPEG in. Okay, she's going to put the JPEG in. So it's 4 to 27. The, the reason I took this particular picture was, was more uh, catching the light off on their, their little cupola or whatever you want to call that up there. Um, because the fact that this is a lighter red than it is over on this face. That's one of the indicators that you're going to use at some point to indicate the depth of what you are painting. So if I, there again, I, I have some more of that frisket on here. Um, and I didn't finish showing you this tube. We're going to, um, I'm just going to square your, squirt a little bit out. I just a little bit of dollop. As you see, I have the, the three colors. I've added a little bit of water to them. Um, 
Now I'm going to take my, my brush and I'm going to mix my paint. Some as if this is type of paint that you're using, um, you don't have to uh, totally mix up the paint, but what it, it's a good idea the first time because see how I've got like that's fresh out of the tube paint and I might not necessarily want that concentration of this color. So I'm going to try to go for, um, I don't mix the whole thing. I'll, I'll leave some of those blobs in there, but as long as I know I have like a, a edge or a pool where that color is pretty consistent, I'm good. I, you'll find as you, you go to paint that you will develop your own little style. I've got a little blue in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, add this yellow because I want to see what these primary eh, primary colors are going to do. They are, um, this is a very warm yellow. There again, see you've kind of got a little bit of a red to it. This is a quinacridone uh, magenta. Um, I still had a little yellow on my brush, but I'm not that concerned. Um, so, okay, now on, on this red, actually, I didn't even add extra water. So I'm just kind of dipping into that wetter paint and see how I'm, I'm going to get a big deposit that way. Um, I would never put, I, well, I don't usually put this amount of paint on and go for a painting. I have a tendency to mix things out as um, I need them. So this is just water, mist spray. You will find also as a watercolorist, you become uh, fascinated with spray bottles and what how they work. I have some eye cleaner and waiting for it to use it so I can turn it into one of my spritzer bottles. Um, a lot of times with the uh, watercolor paper to get your effects, it's... Um, uh, if you take your or your paper and totally wet it, we can get some really nice effects. You know, I'm going to, to save time. So let's come back and see what that looks like. I'm gonna bring the blue over here and get you a little mixing. Now, even just for basic, who's gonna look like what, you can always just kind of like throw a little of the blue over on this side and you can see kind of that purple. What, what color am I getting? And I actually am getting a really nice, rich purple. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that into my sky. Now see, before I had some of this frisket on here. Um, now, right now what I'm doing with this brush, see how those, the lines are, are pretty hard? Um, that's basically called a, a dry brush. So when you, you say, oh, they use dry brush over that, that's one of the ways of using your, your brush. Also in my water, um, I have uh, the various rinsing buckets. I have one where I actually rinse the colors out. I also have, a, this is just a roll of towel, um, old rags, sponge sometimes in the middle. Um, I use that to kind of dry my brush off a little bit before I come into the clear water. And I use, uh, touch the clear water before I come into any other paint. Um, I don't want to intentionally pick up uh, something else or not know that it's on my brush. Now right now I just have clear water on my brush. But I can come back in here and I can begin to soften. Um, some of those edges and create and depending on what the paper is that you're using that also has a lot to do with with what's going on with um, maybe your success or maybe your your frustration um, the better papers are a hundred percent cotton the professional papers for watercolor um, Today, actually, uh, this piece is on a uh, paper by Fabriano, or Fabriano, listen to me, 
it's a uh, Fabriano's um their studio line so now this paper actually um it has uh, I think 25 percent cotton in it all right so I'm going to start with our diner and now we're finally going to do a little sketching um on this one I have started to do a little bit of a pencil line. I just, um, the other day when I was doing this one, I just uh, came up to the picture and was doing it all freehand. So if I were doing an architectural um, painting for a client and they, they wanted more of a realistic as opposed to um, a more of a cartoony, uh, then I would be very accurate about where my lines are and, and everything like this. But this, we're, we're looking at this as more of, uh, let's do a memory and, and um, you know, you could do a little drawing of the, the cafe that you guys ate at and send that postcard to that person. And let's get into, I can't draw. That's also a big thing that a lot of people will say. And it's what I find for myself, because I'm always doing this. If, if I approach something and I'm like, uh oh, I'm trying to draw a nose. And, and I just, I'm like, Ugh. what you have to do is draw the shape, you know, look for those shapes as you're going. And, and then you need to just refer to um, other points in your, your painting or your picture. When, um, when I started this, I started with the word diner, just cause I, I wanted to kind of see, well, how, how far do I want to come for this side, side ah, to this edge? And that, that was, I, for some reason, I guess I wanted my, my diner to be, um, centered. And I don't know why I was worried about that because we're going to doodle. So, but even if I'm doodling, I am still going to try to keep some semblance. So I'm just using a Sharpie. So I, as I said, I, I did kind of cheat. I did put a few of these little lines on here already. And I did that possibly to speed us up a little bit here. And as I said, if I were painting this for the owner and they wanted a realistic one, then my drawing would take at least a day and I would be on graph paper um, and I, I would be very tight with what's going on. I do do some of the, um, oh, like realtors will, will have me do a, a painting uh, as a gift to whoever they just sold a home to, uh, which is really, I, I think that's a, a thoughtful thing to do. Um, and when I'm doing those kind of paintings, then I, I will uh, tighten up and, and have realistically, and, you know, and that way, if the family wants to get rid of the garbage cans and, or something, uh, or the pictures from the winter and they give me a few other pictures for spring you you can always change what's going on nobody's going to come here and say oh, that's not what that diner looks like we're going for the the uh feeling we're going for the emotion we're we're going on remember what fun <laughs> put that hamburger in there or whatever so i did um choose this picture which is very dark to you i know lisa's gonna show you a picture of it but the reason I did was where the Miss Menden is, she is hidden amongst, she's in the middle of the um, uh, car lot. And so she doesn't actually get a lot of sun. And I um, was at one point trying to get some great sun pictures, but it was this time of year. And so I had a lower sun. I um, probably should go out there in the summer when the sun might hit differently. But anyway looking for something like that uh, is not that big for what we're doing here 
but that is the reason I, I picked this picture if you're going I can't even see what she's looking at um, we're not going to be all too worried we've got a little clock here so now, when you talk about graph paper, you mean that you draw it on graph paper and then you transfer it to the watercolor paper? Yes. Yeah. If I'm doing a really, really technical drawing, I will go start with um, graph paper. And then I, um, I have a piece of old uh, glass upstairs that I, I have um, old fluorescent lights uh, shoved under them. Uh, you can use your windows if you don't have a, a light table it's easy you, you just are going to put the the two together tape yourself up to the window and you just want to be able to see that little line and then you can come through with your your pencil and at least to give yourself even just the basic shape or or things and give yourself some points because I do find when I try to trace uh like human figures or things because they're so tricky and it I find that I, I spend a lot more time redrawing because the drawing didn't give me the information I was thinking I was getting and I'm like well that was a waste of an hour or so and and so I I really am getting back into just freehand drawing um unless it's something like this then then I might get out my little ruling ruler and stuff and, and go that way but um on this like I'm just gonna put that nudge so what you're looking for when you are doing your drawing is you are looking for that outer what does that shape look like and even break it down further and you say i see a little triangle here i'm going to put it here now what um my building comes down but then i also have the doorway or the entrance there coming in so I'm looking at this and I'm going, oh, oh, my wall comes out there. I've got kind of a little um, overhang here. So see how I'm just, I'm looking for those, those shapes. I've got kind of a rectangle. I've got a, a little bit of a rectangle going back a little bit. So I'm just going to come in there. And it's enough to get you, oh, I got my little little. Okay, so when I'm looking at um, the vestibule, I can come and I put a line up on the edge of my um, cupola, and I can see that I'm coming down through the, the center of the entrance. So that I've given myself just kind of a touch point. So I'm gonna put my door there and and this is why it's like, why well, even bother measuring? <laughs> and I just kind of plain. So now they have a, a glass block. I'm going to add just a little bit of a hint of that movement going on there. And we have a little sidewalk. Oh, and we have our nice little uh, bench here. Um, that Victorian bench, which you can probably not see. I'm just going to start it with kind of that, that doodle. It has a medallion in the, the center. And you just kind of give your eye that. Your brain will start kicking in and going, oh, I know what a bench looks like. And you can draw your bench to look like any old bench you want it to. You can be as squiggly as you want. And it, it's not... It's your bench, so go for it. Um, because there's no reason you can't just indicate this has got a lot of pattern to it. It doesn't have to be that pattern because your brain is going to kick in and fill in all those other parts for you. So, and you know, even if you think, oh, my drawing's off, too bad, there's a lot of charm to. Um, somebody's drawing like that they've taken the time to um, work on anything or draw anything it's just there's always a charm to it um we have seven windows in here one two three four five six seven usually i will start in the center um my center window if i come up oops sorry 
forgot about this computer. Uh, okay, so if I start on my center window and I, I pull up, the, um, the mullion on the one side lines up to the outer edge of this um, E. So that is, and then the other side of it comes into the other part of the R. So as you can see, I'm going to have smaller windows. So I'm not that concerned. I'm going to go. And then these guys, I guess I made my thing a lot bigger. Oh well. Let's go to one, two, three. So it looks like this diner at, at one time, it was just a freestanding over the years. Cause I do have some of the pictures that uh, they showed online. Um, they've they joined it to a, another building now. So it's much larger. Okay. I lost myself there. Um, Miss Menden, we want that, that little name in there. Um, as I said, we can uh, just draw those letters if I want to. Another way to do it is I'm going to come back here with my pencil and maybe we'll do, you know what, I am not going to frisk at that. That's going to be too much. So on this one, we're, we're going to, this is booth service. And just think that you got yourself a job as a cartoonist and you are just making your little background and you are filling in all that little detail that gives you all that connection to it. So for Miss Mark, Miss Menden, it is a old English style. Um, and so you might go, oh my God, I, that's just, overwhelming. If you learn calligraphy, sorry, it's it's actually, and you had a flat brush, you can easily make those letters. Um, but that's a whole nother uh, class. It's a C point. But if you were actually going to um, the pen point that you use for this old English is a, a, a flat, basically. It's a, a C blade, C, if I remember correctly. When I was in 10th grade, she was a new teacher, but she was a very good teacher. She had us uh, practicing strokes. Um, and I used to make up little patterns and people's names. And so you learn all these little strokes, but that's with the, the brush, the flat brush. So that's why another thing that I'm saying that it's, you've got so much potential with the type of brushes that you have to use. Um, so, so you could have even something like that with um, a whole nother probably make it so you can actually read it but anyway this is how how you would do that and that's a whole lot of, of stuff to doodle on um I kind of was doing that with my little pencil thing so what we're going to try this time is we're going to try it with frisket so I'm just going to take a pencil this time instead of my my sharpie and I'm going to write Miss Menden and I don't know that I'm going to get all that detailed, but I'm going to get the, the basics of it. I, I'm going to get that kind of point in my um, letter. And so some of these letters are, it's funny how you learn something so long ago and it just kind of keeps coming back to you sometimes. Uh, Yeah. 
and you can always just make up your own lettering for it. All right, let's just give the basic general. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna use Friskit. I'm using Friskit because I want to block out Miss Menden's name. I'm gonna block out the, the diner and maybe the, the clock face. This is Liquitex uh, masking fluid. There are all different kinds of masking uh, fluids out there. This one is really economical. It, this cost me $6.20 uh, a year ago. And like I said, it's like a, a thin um, rubber cement. And I've been using it for the whole year just to uh, see, is it, you know, acceptable? Does it work on my papers? Do, does it, one thing when you're using a frisket, you have to make sure your paper's dry because if you put it on damp paper, it's going to just clamp onto it and it becomes part of the paper. So that's the only important thing to do, especially if you are a watercolorist that likes to put a lot of color down on a wet surface because the color moves so much differently that way. So we have dry paper. The other thing is you don't want to, um, well, we'll have to put this flat when, when I go to do this because it, it's going to drip. This is very, very liquid. Um, so I said dry paper and as far as um, putting frisket on, it, like I said, it's rubber cement. So you are going to ruin a good brush because it's really quick to kind of dry up on your brush. So you want to use uh, either brushes that I've actually, with this product, Liquitex, um, with this product, I have found that as long as I dump it in my brush into the water, ASAP. I mean, I it, and I work quick. I'm I'm not 20 minutes late or anything because by that time it's going to be drying. But if I'm just going do 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 boom into the water, I haven't had any issues getting this out of the brush with a little bit of soap and water, a uh, little love and care. But I don't use my really really good brushes for it. I find there's a lot of decent brushes that you can get really reasonable from places like Michael's. Um, they are usually like their, I'm sorry, their Talon series. Um, and so you might see actually, th this is not, um, this is, I'm going more for the color. I didn't bring anything with me that is that, but, um, the Talon series is a nylon. Um, synthetic, so it's going to resist um, having this stuff stick to it a little bit better. So that's um, something that you want to go for. Don't use, if you have any kind of natural brushes, I don't know that I uh, have used any of my good natural brushes on that. So um, you can also use a ruling pen. This is very, very thin. There again, I... Um, I use my little caps from the glue sticks and you don't have to have a ruling pen. You can use anything. You can, I use toothpicks a lot. This is one of those skewers that they sell in a big pack for, at the grocery store uh, for your little um, shish kebabs. So I'm going to take just a few drops. It's not going to take a lot. So I don't want to pour a whole cap or anything. Um, you're better off just to add more as you need it rather than um, just fill up this cap and then, and then find that you didn't use half of it because it you don't want to put something back that is starting to dry. So as you see, I'm working on, I can actually pull this up. Oh, did I, did I mess you up there now? Okay, I'm going to pull this up a little bit and... Let's watch my hand cramp and go, ah. All right. So bigger areas, I will take the brush on. Um, 
for Miss Menden, I am going to have to come down to the paper or the um, table here. It's so much easier. All right. So I am, and actually I'm kind of feeling, this is that, that uh, cellulose paper. So it'll, it's actually going to be interesting to see if we can get that to pull. Um, or is it just diving into the paper? I actually didn't get a chance to test that. So maybe I will show, because it really does, it feels like it's kind of absorbing. I'm going to do just the M. And then the other thing is... You don't have to use any kind of masking fluid. I'm just letting you know that you have options. If you look at something and you think, oh, that, that is way over my pay scale. Um, it's too much for me. You know, who, who's to say you can't just change it to something else? But the other thing that you want to do, uh, don't let it... Uh, scare you is is just to learn how to do your brush you learn the calligraphy of your brush um, as I showed earlier I used to never use a flat brush that's what these are called I when I started painting again um, this actually is the brush that I was recommended it came from uh, cheap Joe's uh, and they're down in one of the Carolinas. This is a um, dragon's tongue. It comes from Spain, and this uh, was a number eight. Uh, it's got no point left, but it's one of my favorite brushes because, it, and this is what I'm saying about it, if it's a good brush, and uh, like when I, I lost the point on this, because I tend to scrub areas out sometimes, and that was the brush I was using, so I, I, you know, scrubbed with this brush. And it's it's still one of my favorite brushes. I put polka dots on my brushes if there's something I can scrub with or it, it just tells me, go ahead and do whatever you want. The ones that don't have polka dots, it's like, you must respect them now. They're still fresh. And so, also, as we're talking about deals... Um, I found these are all Robert Simmons Sapphire. I found these, and they, they're still there, I think, in the Dick Blick online, look in their clearance. And when I was working on that heart, the public um, uh, art project in Framingham, and I had a lot of cartooning, like we're trying to do, on this. Um, and, but I had to outline everything and I found this little liner brush and that's actually what got me to go, Oh, well, let's see what else they have in these because I, I recognized what kind of fiber it was from the description. And I thought, well, Robert Simmons, I mean, they're, they put out a nice brush, uh, reasonable price, good, good learning. And, um, so this is a, a 10 over zero. It's a, a liner and it's a S 51. But this has such a nice um, flow to it when, and you can keep a nice sharp, sharp line. So if I wanted to, actually this is going to be so tiny that it's going to be ridiculous. I'm, I could come in here and don't worry about that pencil because we can always come away from that. I would not usually do it this way. This is what I would normally do. I would find a different brush and maybe these flats and I would come in and I would paint the negative spaces. So, oops, and I just messed that one up. Too bad. Once I've lost that white, it's, it's gone. Um, I was thinking I was going to use the Friskit on that. All right. Okay, I'm actually, on the rest of this um, piece, I'm going to let that this edge over here continue to dry because I do have that 
um, frisket on there. And I don't want to mess that up. All right, good enough. Also, don't forget to, to remind yourself that every painting, um, we, we call it the ugly teenager um, phase, where you're just kind of, you're in your block out or blocking in stages. And so I'm going to stay away from that because I'm getting too close to that, that frisket. Now, one other thing about frisket, um, I suppose I should have just done her name with a flat. Um, once you are done with it, make sure you, you rinse that quickly. But once I've rinsed frisket into my water, I have to change that water because I don't want to accidentally take a, a good brush and put it in there because... I just, I don't know what kind of concentration. It shouldn't get too much of anything, but it's just kind of a precaution because you don't want to really uh, subject your brush to anything like that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you just be wet. Let's come back up here. All right. Actually, I suppose we have enough of the diner for for what we're doing. Um, going to another thing you don't need to worry about, like when you're a watercolorist, you don't absolutely need to have an easel or anything fancy because what you'll find is that sometimes you need to be able to move that paper you you need to let that that water go um so let's take a look at some of these and we can put a, a little bit of a background in here um let's give we'll put a few little trees and oh i don't know what do we want that, that far away background with some I suppose I don't have to have a line around everything now there again um, this paper as I said see how I have all these harsh lines and that's a, a sky you, you really kind of need to have something a little bit softer the spray bottle is going to be something that um, this paper should hold up. Okay. You have different ways that you can um, add water to your, your um, painting and your surface. Now what you will find is, uh, as I said, the... Um, the paper will curl up and oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Not, ooh, this is another thing that we were going to look at. Another good deal I just recently found were these professional watercolor pencils. So this kit, uh, under $25 fun to, and I've been wanting to, to work a little bit more with a, a bigger set of watercolor pencils to see, do I even like it? It doesn't fit my personality or not. So if we're coming in here and, uh, oh, I am just trying to get that. I thought these were really good because you can just color away. You don't even have to bring your, your watercolor on, uh, in your sketchbook you could use this set and color away and then when you get home or you're back from the tour whatever you're doing that day uh, you can add water if you want and uh, you can just probably make a, just as great of a drawing just using the 
the colored pencil without even adding um, anything else. And don't feel that you always have to use it as if you were writing. Um, hold it like a paintbrush and you can come down and now you're using the side of that. And you're getting all that coverage. Um, and I have a little, actually I have probably a line I should probably um, add in there around my clocks so I have it and I'm not loaning that in. So you can also sketch with the, the color itself as opposed to giving yourself an outline for everything. You don't have to, um, like I said, it's your drawing. You can, you can do whatever you want with it. Another thing, um, these are, you know, the set is not expensive. So I am not expecting to have a lot of pigment in these. Um, for me, I was mainly, I just wanted to see what could they do? What will they do? And you see, it's, it's just like when you're, you're drawing, you come in here and the varied uh, pressure that you're putting on there, it's gonna um, change the value that you're laying down. Um, so when you want a really darker color, you're gonna add more pressure to that. Also, you, there's no reason you don't can't mix as you go on the paper. Um, but this is just kind of a, a fun little doodle and a, a way to, to add some color Let's see, we'll give ourselves a, oh, I guess we could go for a gray roof. Uh, maybe I want a purple roof. There again, it's my picture. Even though they have a purple roof, I, or they have a, just a tin roof, I can come in here with whatever color I want. Also these, um, these pencils and these kind of things, it's, it's fun to experiment in, um, see what what are they capable of I mean how well do they play with with your paints and no reason that you can't and, and like I said right now I'm I'm on that um, two buck Chuck stuff here and so all the more reason to doodle and play with it and just just kind of get a feel for what, what does this stuff do um, now, this is that, that paper that I want to see how is it going to take a wash compared to the paper I'm used to. This is that cellulose that don't paint, paint your masterpieces on it because it is not going to have the um, archival uh, characteristics that you would need for your masterpiece. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, and I, I'm gonna see what this looks like on another watercolor board paper also. We'll do kind of the, the same um, treatment because we wanna see what are these papers gonna do. Now this is the Strathmore. As I said, it, it's a decent paper. There's no, uh, nothing to sneeze at. So when you get into the store and you're looking at this block, I think at this point, um, this size, it might be a $65 block. So that's why it's like, you know, you don't want to use that just willy nilly. This you're probably going to be able to get for less than 30 or 20 or something like that. And it's going to do fine. Um, it's the different quality papers definitely um, will cost more. Um, also another uh, Fabriano is another uh, nice paper. Uh, Joe's down where I got the, um, uh, the this brush. 
they've got their Kilimanjaro and there that's a reasonably uh, priced paper and it's also very good it's um and they also have it in a bright bright white some of the companies use a little bit more bleaches and we'll get the uh, papers to read a lot brighter than you know it'll be more like that well I guess those are pretty close to each other anyway um, but see this paper looks so much grayer to this and sometimes that is becomes a factor of what you're you're looking at so right now we're gonna see what is the difference between if I'm gonna do like a bleed um, and put in a, a sky on my paper um, what what is the difference going to be between the Strathmore and the 25% Fabriano Studio Strathmore? <coughs> I tend to write and tell myself what I'm um, working on. So because I'll work on something one day and, and then I come back to it and I'm like, what was I working doing there? So if I'm going to wet just to, like, let's say I just want to work on the sky right now and I don't want my building getting wet, then I'm going to take my uh, painting and then I'm actually coming from this side and I'm just going to go around the outside. And this is another reason why I'm saying that sometimes it's nice not to have <coughs> everything locked down so tight that you can't still move the board. I was wetting this sky and see now my water has saturated in. When you are working with watercolor like this, then a lot of times you're watching that water on your paper. You're going to watch that sheen and you can do different things at different times. So that's one thing that's kind of fun um, about watercolor is getting to know what you can do when it's really wet and when it's not so wet. So in something like this, if I'm just laying in a sky, so if I'm just using, uh, now this is a cerulean blue and this would be considered a warm blue. Because if, as you see it, it's gonna, it's got kind of a yellow to it. So what's fun is you can drip that color into it. Um, you don't always have to move the the color with your paintbrush. Sometimes it's fun just to kind of splatter it in and then get it moving. And then, where is that new blue that was so bright? There it is. Uh, I'm going to try a little bit of this QOR. Now, when I do try other people's paints, um, there again, I'm, I'm looking for the characteristics. You know, is this something that it has just that crazy? See, look at that. Isn't that great? You can make a little caterpillar out of that. And that's just, it's a wet piece of um, paper. And you're just coming in there with that. But look how it feeds out. And that's what they, is so fun about watercolor is that it can go crazy on you. And you just go with it. It just, you don't always have to mix your colors on the palette. Um, you can mix on your paper. And what we can do is after this dries is come back with another layer and you can darken things that way too. Now, if I'm like, oh, I don't like that, um, I just add a little bit more water, let it kind of go. And you can also do it with your spritz bottle, add more water, let it kind of flow. So if you were doing your dramatic sunsets or sunrises, um, this is where you can just 
kind of keep moving that, that paint around with your water. Uh, you'll find different ways to you can throw water at it. As you see, I'm, I'm holding it down there because this direction and keeping my sky downward now because I don't want, if I come back up, I'm gonna start dropping into, or there's a chance that I might start dropping into the um, painting itself if it's too wet, which it is starting to do that. And it's not a big deal. I um, I work with either Viva, as everyone says, because it's so cloth-like. And the other thing I will use is old flannel from worn out sheets or something. There again, you can come in here with your, your tissue. You can pull up that, that paint too. You can create a little bit lighter spot there. Um, if I wanna get a little bit more cloud. Now the other thing that you'll learn or you'll start seeing that you're getting used to is um, that the colors look very vivid right now, but when they dry, they will dry lighter. And for some people, they find that frustrating. And other people, I think I'm getting Lisa like, she, she keeps moving. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Okay, anyway, I was starting to talk about how the, the colors will lighten up. And that's another part about watercolor that some people are not that excited about. I tend to paint in layers. Um, I will start with my base drawing and, and or painting, and then I go into building up those, those darks. Um, but sometimes it's fun to just do it all in one and you just that's when you can now we're gonna try just even sticking a little bit more of that that solid blue now yes. my hands sometimes will start to cramp all those years of abuse So if you see me move my arm a little oddly, you'll go, ah. See, now I'm probably going to get myself into trouble here, but that's why I, I want you to see this. Is See how this is getting really close to wanting to drip into. Now, these are those guys already went. Um, we're not that worried about this. I'm, I'm not worried about that dropping in. If I'm starting to... But see how quickly I, I'm like, ah, I don't want it attached. <laughs> and that is just because that little line is a little too wet for what's what I was trying to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here. And we'll show you how we can still pick a lot of that up. And if I let it dry now, I can still save that area and it will still can be the the red of the building if that's what I just said I want to do um right now I'm, I'm just gonna throw a little bit more paint in here to see what happens with this guy All right so See how if you add some water, you can soften all those edges and then you can also just kind of keep it moving. Um, this is, is fun to do for backgrounds. Um, just that kind of misty. And you know, you wanna, it's, in the sky, it's you're going to want more of a, a natural. You don't want to see those hard edges. So, I put my water far, far away from me today. But 
And like I said, if I want to come back in here, I can kind of poke at it with my, my little paper towel or rag, and I can still pull out some of those whites to lighten my sky. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna let this guy dry. If I were working um, on a board like this, I would flip the board to make sure things were dropping down. I wouldn't um, keep it in the upright position at this point. But even when you do things like that, I mean, you can start to see some really kind of cool things happening in there. And that can be fun to play with. Like if this were a, a wood scene or something, you can start to read that sky and, and start to read some of these shapes as trees. And then you could come in there. All right, so as I, I said, I'm, this is not a paper I normally work with, but what I'm seeing is that you can lift a lot off of it, which um, can be a good thing. So it depends on you and your technique and, and what you, you develop as, as time goes on. So, but anytime you see something that is kind of uh, hard and you're thinking, ah, oh, I don't like that, just, you know, try hitting it again with the water. Um, it kind of reactivates if it's still in this wet. Once this dries, it, that paint's not going to, activate unless I start pushing it around with a, a brush. So you shouldn't, you know, don't be afraid of that. Just go for it. So let's see what these um, colored pencils did. Did they? I packed them all the way up. Okay, so I have to get clean water here. I usually have two buckets of water. One is rinse and one is the clean water. Today I, I threw a, a third bucket in there in case I needed it for uh, fixing that frisk or rinsing the frisket off. But on this, I just used the um, skewer. So I wasn't concerned with that. Another thing that works well is those little straw uh, the stir stri sticks. Uh, toothpicks. Another thing that you works well for here for pulling things off are Q-tips, which I forgot to bring some. But you can just imagine. All right, so we're just going to let that guy dry for a minute. And let's see the other one. What should we do to him? All right, we'll come back to this guy's sky because he's getting pretty streaky. Or maybe we should just go come in here and do our some kind of uh, background. Um, okay, so when I did that, when I was painting my um, water onto my paper, um, this time I, I would just do a general, I, I really should have worked this guy up on the real paper to see if we have any difference. But this is good enough for now. And now as I, I just wet the paper, now you can start to see th how things will start to travel, um, which kind of undoes what I, I was just saying, oh, it's not going to move. It these areas aren't, they're still going to be there. They might, might lighten up if some of this, this, uh, uh, paint travels a little bit. Um, but this is why when you're working a, as a watercolorist and you're trying to save your white, you have to, you'll learn to say, okay, I'm going to put the background in now. And maybe I just want to work wet that area because once you wet the whole thing, the whole thing's got opportunity to, to grab the color, which is not a bad thing. Um, so if I'm going with um, more traditional whites. Now, one thing about, I like this little tray because it does have so many 
little pukas for you to put all your different colors in. And as I said, I, I'm using this tray for a lot of the colors I don't standardly have on my palette. Like uh, this is a, a cobalt turquoise, um, uh, the, that lavender there, I, I mentioned that, that that has a little bit of white to it. And it's a little more opaque, but it has some really cool uh, effects. Now, okay. Good thing I looked to see what I, I just dipped myself in there. I was going to say, I was going to go for the sky. All right, so I'm dropping a little bit of a, a warmer green in here right now. Also, when I find for me, it's uh, when you're learning your colors, if you're, you're getting to this point where um, you're really into this and you want to know your Windsor green compared to your um, sap, whatever the color is. Um, that's why another reason why I think it's good to write down uh, who it is that, that uh, you're painting with. But at the same time, that's all foo-foo, whatever. Um, the main thing is, is just have fun. And if you enjoy color, that's one of the things that is so much fun with uh, watercolor is that it can go anywhere and be unpredictable and you can have these great little things that happen and you're like they're little happy accidents or what was that that the uh, I was gonna say Bob Vila uh, Bob, Bob Ross, Ross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bob Vila is out there going no that's not the kind of brush I'm wielding so and if it does get too damp which I've got a lot of water on here right now um, because it it's eventually going to be soaked into the paper. This back, I can still feel, is pretty dry. Um, but there again, if it's a little bit too wet, you can come back in here with your uh, paper towel or whatever type of rag you're using and blot that up a little bit. Um, what did I just put the... This is the, the violet. Um, it has... Uh, it, it's it, actually it's a fun color to play with uh, Daniel Smith and but it, it goes on differently there's um, a Turner color that I'm just getting used to that has a but it's a nice color it's it's a um, turquoise fresh water and this is um, Turner another uh, company. There again, I like to, if I find a color I, that's interesting, um, cobalt violet. Now this is Turner's version of cobalt violet. I'm used to it in the uh, Windsor Newton and theirs is, Turner's has a tad of a white in it. So Sometimes it it stands out a little bit differently than I would expect it to, but <clears throat> as you can see, this the warm purple and then the the cooler purple they're kind of fun how they they'll play together and and that garish color of green there. Um, some of the, <clears throat> if, you, if you're moving into the tubes, uh, look at the people's color charts and um, make a couple selections. But um, you can go pretty crazy pretty quick. That, that's for sure. The price will probably get you to slow down a little bit. Uh, the uh, golden, the, the QOR, this is their color selection uh, that, that came with this. And as you can see, when you look at this, I mean, all these yellows, you're like, okay, they look the same. Well, until you get to know those yellows or actually see them, you might go, oh, well, this one's cooler. This one has a more granulation. Um, that 
goes into a whole realm of uh, more investigation type thing. So that's why sometimes it's just fun to pull out uh, a basic uh, palette and have fun with it. This um, pearlescent stuff is, is interesting to work with. Now, as I said, the I find reusing your old eye drop droppers comes in pretty handy because you can control how much water you're putting in to each little pool. Um, I usually just kind of go around and get them all softening. The, the paint is uh, usually what I do is I will drop some water on there and I'll give it a minute or two. It's kind of like when you have some crust on your, your counter. I just put that sponge on there and let that moisture do the work. By the time I come back to it, it's just wipe it off. So that's basically what's happening with your, your paints. They're redissolving. Um, also, this tray probably shows you better what um, that paint looks like compared to when I'm first squeezing it into uh, the little uh, divot there. It's, it, that is still pure paint right there, but uh, surrounded by a pool of the color. And I usually work from that pool. And these, there's just all kinds of, of things that we could do. With the watercolor, one thing, um, you, you have the, the drying times. And you really can't get away from them. You just, some people uh, will use a hair dryer in between. Sometimes you're trying to like say, stop, I love it right there. And, and then it keeps crawling. And, and that's the, the thing about watercolors <laughs> that you're like, ah, so, but you know, you can always sit there with your hair dryer and see if, if you can get it to hold or, or just to hold that, um, color for a minute. And as it's drying and, and curing up a little bit more, it's, You'll see the edges of the paper, like if I come up here, this this is almost dry, and, and see how my paint is just going to stay up there. But the minute I start hitting some of the puddles, then it's going to change. So, so I keep doing that, I keep dropping my paint into my diner. Now you stop. All right, I'm going to show you one thing while we're letting this guy dry a bit more. Okay. This is too wet. It's a, a pool, so I'm going to let it dry horizontally like that. All right, let's see what we can do with this guy. I don't know why I'm picking this green up. It's some of these greens are just so green, you know. But all right, so that's some of the areas that we had um, that colored pencil on there. Everything's so blue. Let's see. This paper is not doing that that bad, actually. I had wanted to see what would happen if we did use that cleaning solution on it. Um, and my frisket is dry on that, so we'll see. Okay, so let's see what happens if I start rubbing on the paper with Mr. Clean. Am I gonna go right through my paper? Let's come over here. No. Now, the lift is really nice. So see, this is a, a, a real plus um, for people. Also, you might find certain colors might stain a little bit more and others won't. So this is, this is why I don't poo-poo uh, different materials. Even if I find them at the discount store or or whatever they, they just might have a, a characteristic that you think oh this is fun look what I can do with this 
and so don't don't fear if you go to a, a workshop or something you know you you work with what you have um all right i want to see if that if this is dry enough we'll, we'll find out if we can get that uh Yeah, it's, it's rolling off enough. This is another thing to watch out for with Frisket is sometimes you'll have enough paint on the top layer of it. So it's still wet paint. So you, as you can see, my uh, finger has got a little pigment on it. So what you have to watch out for is drawing that pigment onto the paper somewhere else. Now, this for any of you who remember the gum shoe, the gum bottom shoe, that's basically what this material is. Um, it is sold as um, something that you would lift rubber cement with. Um, and I don't really know, you know, all your craft stores are gonna have it, but I didn't think rubber cement itself was a big seller anymore. Um, I didn't know if they pulled it environmentally. All right, so the frisket is not horrible on this paper. So there's no reason that you, I was uh, concerned that it was sinking into the paper a little bit too much. I hit a little bit up here, Let's see. There again, if I had, um, okay, right there, that's where it's going. This is what I wanted to show you. And, and this is gonna, is, Plus this is damp. All right, so I did a bad thing because I'm, I'm trying to pull that off when it's damp, but this is when we want to learn from other people's mistakes because that's going to save you the frustration, okay? So it can see my, if you could feel this, you'd say that paper's damp. Um, it's not wet, it's just moist, as some people don't like to hear. Um, Anyway, when I started to pull that, now I started to dig a hole in this paper. And so if I come over with my paint, it's, you're going to actually see that I have dug a hole into my paint. Where am I here now? Okay, I'm in the diner. Um, so I still wouldn't toss my painting because of that. I would, my theory is if it's already broken, what the heck? Um, you can't make it any worse, or can you? <laughs> so, but we all learn something from each painting and, and it just is fun. See, so now I'm, I'm just, I'm painting around my, my letters instead of trying to block them out with other means. Uh, another thing that some people don't like frisket for is because it does leave such a sharp edge um, and they want something with more of a flow. You can still, once you <clears throat> are getting more used to things, you can still get back in there and um, uh, change that. You, it, you're not stuck with that sharp, sharp edge. Usually I will come in and take my soft brush. And in fact, when I first started getting back into painting, when I did, I, it was I, after I had moved out here um, and I had not painted for years on a regular basis at all. Um, I was doing more music at the time and time was is limited when you were working 40 hours and during the day you think when I get home I'm gonna do this 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 and then you get home and you're pooped out and you don't do anything so um, all right so at least we now have our, our red diner I'm gonna just finish this guy off so he kind of looks like what we're I'm not real concerned with um, matching the color at this point 
when you look at your cartoons and things, just that, that nice solid color is always nice. And there again, just getting around shapes, it's all just that calligraphy. See, and when I'm pulling this brush and just making those little marks, I can keep, um, that's one of the things that's nice about a flat like this, is you can go sideways with it and then you can create a nice line um, for whatever you're trying to do. Now, if you have a good round, you can sometimes do that too, but your round, let me paint with that for a little bit, is a little bit different. It, it, it actually gives you a lot more versatility, but the, um, the uh, flat has got you know, it's really uh, helps you for certain things. So you don't get that. You know how sometimes you'll see somebody, they'll come in here and, and they're going boom, boom, boom. And, and you might see all of those strokes where if you take a flat of the right, well, you, you twist it if, if it's getting too wide, um, but you can take a flat and come right in there and kind of hit that in just one one quick swipe and it's all a matter of, of working with your materials and you'll get um, you'll get to know your brushes and you'll get to know the, the different the springiness that is or isn't there um, and you don't have to uh, mortgage the house and have uh, overpriced uh, brushes, well not overpriced, but you know, um, actually my sister has these buckets that she gets from like Michael's and they're, I don't know how many brushes are in them, but they're a really nice assortment of brushes and she has them there for the, the kids and the uh, their projects. And I think, gee, I wish, you know, because the, the brushes I grew up on were those those ones that came in those kits, you know, the couple pieces of a nylon and stuff. But hey, we still had a good time and painted with them. So, you know, it, you don't necessarily have to let's see here. I said, oh, I'm, I'm taking that because of the lighter wall. And I just treated that whole wall as if it was something else. I'm just randomly painting at this point now and we're just gonna bring that in seeing the fun thing about watercolor is just how you can control um, everything with water and that's one of the things I love about it is is that I with pastels you you can't you have to worry about that that dust I am um, I can sit in the I have a little corner in our living room and so nobody gets lonely I sit there and I paint with my uh in my little corner but I'm only using water and the paints there's no fumes it's water you know that's what I, I love about it because if I'm doing oils I stay in the art room um, I've got solvents and in the pastels you've got the dust I actually I'm getting back into um, doing charcoal I'm getting myself drawing I in my 20s I drew every day all the time you know and I just drew whatever I was, if it was at a friend, I drew their cat, you know, or something like that. So I was one of those kind of people and I really got out of that, that habit. Um, life changes and you go, hey, what happened to that? Um, so it's never too late to pick that brush back up. Actually, I guess I started to tell you how I got myself back in the habit of painting every day by, um, I signed up at the local community college or maybe it wasn't even community college, but the local evening program and they had a little watercolor um, studio. She taught two beginners 
and I sat down. Um, I actually took Ree with me and sat down and he learned the basics uh, from, her name was Joan Rubens. And I sat there and I didn't say, oh, I've been, I had, I had a degree in painting. Uh, I just took it and said, starting over, here we go. And because everybody is gonna give you some kind of little um, nugget of information. I, that's what I think is so exciting about um, watching other painters because I guess we just can't help talk about, but talk about what we're doing. And that's how we all learn, at least for me, is, is somebody tells me, well, when I'm working on this, right now I'm looking at that shadow underneath that, um, that little hangover there. Um, so I'm, I'm starting to bring that into my painting. And that's why I, I picked this color. Now, your color can be any color. It's the value of it is um, what is, and by value, I mean the lightness or the darkness of it. So even on, on this little roof line, it's, um, it's reflective. So it, it's actually not that, that dark and it's going to be picking up colors of the sky, but you know, there, there's no reason to um, not just kind of have fun and doodle it. I have to get rid of that. These greens are just scary. <laughs> So we have different ways we could either find something happy for that or I, I tend to go for earthy colors so when I, I have things that are jarring like that it, it really kind of gets to me. Alright, I'm going to need a Quinacridon, where are you? This color I think is so much fun. This is a, um, a Daniel. Uh, Smith and it's called Aussie gold and when you you put it out you think oh that looks so orange um, But what this is what I love it about it. This is why I, I bought it is when you let it travel I'm gonna just spritz part of it And I'm going to Take some water for the rest of it. See how if I spritz it and I, I let it drop another way I can do that is I can bring like if I want to do a whole bleed, I'm going to wet the, all of this paper. And then I come up here and I touch that and I can let that run down. So that's how you can create those, those nice bleeds um, if you're working on your sky. But what I love about this color is that when you use it pretty full strength, it almost is um, like a cad orange. It, it has a, light, a lot of life to it. But you can also thin it out to barely anything, but I, I think it, it's such a nice gold. Um, and I like the, the fact that it, it will travel into just that nice little progression there. So there again, it's just all the looking at the different colors and I'm going to get this wanted to do its little crap thing there. All right. And also, see how it just you can keep playing with things that's one fun with watercolor you can just keep doing different layers and seeing what happens um i'm getting rid of those that's something yellow and i know it probably looks like i paint with a huge amount of colors and it's not always there's i'm sure you some of you have heard some of these stories well oh you get too many colors and it gets too destroyed to death yeah, of course that does happen um but if if you're finding that that's an issue for you then you you can address it that that way but in the meantime i think it's just fun to to play with all that fresh color that you can get um the, with the uh, pastels, I mean, they, it's just a, that that one there is a, a pastel too. Um, and so is this one. And actually this one was the first pastel I bought, 
and there again I hit that sale um, and it was just a small set of mungos of some sort they call them gallery mungos and I had a picture of this salt marsh that is down on the the bike trail down in like North Falmouth area and it was just one of those paintings that I, I saw it as a pastel so I bought a set of pastels and, and played with it. Didn't know anything about the uh, difference of papers and things I've since learned but th this is actually on a very rough paper called Richardson um, and I don't know it, it just I started taking uh, classes while uh, a local it was uh, Jean Rozier Smith I caught her just before she stopped um, teaching so within her last six months or so a uh, year I suppose it was but um, you know a lot of these uh, watercolor pastel oil whatever it is there's just so many different ways that you can utilize any of these materials and if you decide that you want to start taking lessons uh, check out your your local uh, the senior centers the area schools there's probably somebody there teaching um, a watercolor and give you a little bit more intense um, lesson or you can always check back with us here on Blackstone Valley Art Association um, <laughs> and our TV station but see for something like this I think it, it's it's fun it's fresh it's it's uh, and I really don't see a reason why I would say don't even bother with this paper it definitely it feels differently but I, I wouldn't say um, you can't use it it just it's different and I think for this type of uh, sketching and just putting in your your block colors um, it's it's good for that now I, I was just touching it to feel you know how, how dry are you what are you doing here because we can always still come back in here with our uh, yeah it's a little bit wet for my marker but there is no right or wrong it's not like okay you can't go back to this step or that step or that material um, so there's no reason you can't come back and continue drawing after you've added some color and just play with it you can go do a picture of your your dog or your own house yeah I wonder if they even teach much calligraphy anymore I've, I've heard that they don't really even teach that much writing so it's it's um you know some some people make a, a living doing calligraphy for people on their wedding inv invitations I guess um, but it, it's a, a fun skill to, to learn if you are interested in, in the different writing styles and, and things So you can come back in here and you know it's your painting you can add whatever you want actually I, I see now the top of their diner is um, yellow not red like mine but I'm not that worried about that I'm actually having kind of fun with this oh that's another thing and look at that this is that paper stuff um, and I just dug it up again so be careful not not to dig too hard but you can take um, oh, even the end of your, your paintbrush and scratch into a painting like that and, and create a, a, a texture. I wouldn't do a lot on that paper, but if you were using a, a good um, watercolor paper, you can really get in there and, and uh, create different uh, textures. You could create a wood pattern if you want and 
is almost in, inscribing it. I don't know if you can see all the the shine uh, for some of those paints, but um, oops. Let's see. Where's the other thing? What? Oh, there it is. Oh, you're down there. Okay, so this guy is still very wet. But anything else in particular you would like to see, Lisa? Hmm, I think you covered questions? quite a lot of different fun things. Well, now I want sessions on salt and sessions on saran wrap. And oh, yeah. On color mixing. You got two seconds. I'll. I'll... No, no, you don't. <laughs> I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, what's so much fun. It's um, all the different things that you can do because. Oh, what is that? You know that webbing that they sell at Halloween time? <laughs> and you think, that that's not biodegradable, is it? You know, so some of these things you think, ah. Oh. But anyway, you can take that stuff and spread it out all over your wet painting. <laughs> and then there again, the, the pigment grabs onto the fibers and you get these interesting patterns. And... Um, I, I also have a whole collection of like the nylon bags from you know produce and things that have that crisscross pattern mm -hmm. and um, you can lay those kind of things down on, on your paper and then um, spritz your paint on it. So all the, these little um, spritzer bottles all come in handy and, and I do have an assortment because they all kind of do different things. This one is just my general spritzer bottle that I'm always reusing something. So this apparently came from some kind of cleaner or, or something. Um, sometimes I might need to buy the new sprayer. And as you know, they some of them will have a little twist to it. But this one, um, a lot of times I'm using it if I'm spray painting my or spray painting, wetting my whole paper. And I also use it for wetting my palette. Um, sometimes I'm doing it just like that to clean my palette. But this one has more of a spray. This guy is also a leftover cleaning product of some sort. This guy has like a really hard um, spray. So I usually use it, I go around to the little bins and, and I can just get a nice stream of water when I don't want to sit there with that um, eyedropper. <laughs> this just goes through too. But if sometimes you can take some of this stuff and shoot it back into your painting and lift things up. It's also why you see like things like squirt guns. It's like, oh, what will that do? <laughs> so it, it's kind of fun to, um, and maybe we should do something on that where you're really saturating it with color. And then you come back in here and you can say, oh, let's pull this out and get that out of there and things. So there, there's just a, a whole mess of stuff. I saw Tom Schaller do, uh, uh, no, no, it wasn't Tom Schaller. Uh, Tom Lynch was doing, uh, he uses spray bottles quite a, a bit. And apparently you can buy like a whole set of his spray bottles. I don't know if they all have different, you know, one spits, one drips. I just, you know, like I said, I collect them from something and I, I play with them and I go, oh, this is, this one is like one of my nice mist ones. This is the one that mists and I get a really nice mist off of that. But then the same, product. It, this was back when I was trying to lighten my hair with sun in or something. Um, this one has more of a blur, blibber. It, it drips a lot more. So when I want things to go plop and unexpected, I use that one. So the, but like I said, you don't have to have all of this stuff in order to paint. I, if I'm painting really tight with, I want the bare minimum, I will take this along with me, if anything, but a lot of times I don't even use a spray bottle. I'll just use my brush and wet the paper that way. And so you, you 
the more you paint, the, the more you kind of just come up with what works, you know, for you and, and uh, things. You can have my stuff everywhere. So, um, we can come back in here. And I guess I didn't really show you too much about the, the round brush there. I was showing you the, the flat. Now, this is, is your um, workhorse. If all you want to do is buy one paintbrush, and um, like I, I said, now this is a, the Perla, um, Escado Perla. This is a number eight, and it would um, run you about $20, I think. Now, when I bought this one, um, that one was, was over $30. But I, I thought, I'm going to you know, get back into this. I want to take it serious. I knew it was, um, money well invested to, to go with that brush. Um, but if that gives you a little sticker shock, don't let it stop you because things like, uh, this Princeton Neptune and it, it's got a nice big belly on it is, is what they, they call that, that um, it carries a lot of water and it can carry a lot of color. So you, you can get into your painting and continue to paint without running out. This one is also around, but you, you can see the difference in the points, I think. Um, you can get surprised sometimes you go, Oh, I didn't realize I, I could, uh, carry such a, a fine line on that but um some of these they will after a while uh you'll wear out there's because there's not a lot of hairs there and it's not a big deal um you usually will just find something else to to create that line with um because for the most part a lot of times you're just using your brush to come in there and just cover that whole area uh, and you can drop in other colors as you need. Sometimes I'll, I'll come in and I'll just put like the lines of, for this, it's, it's that roof. And I'm going to let that dry because I'll have a little bit different look than if I come in here and start to put those lines in here. Um, we know this is a curved roof and I'm going to kind of keep with that curved line. Of course, that's the way I drew it too, but, um, this is wet, wet, so it's going to kind of fade and I can pick up this, this heavier deposit here is a line just connecting those. So now you're giving them a trail to, uh, follow and, and that's kind of a fun thing to do. Sometimes you can get that, uh, pigment to drop down enough that. You know, you just make it travel. Let me have one more. But these are all ways that um, you'll see different watercolorists use. And it's all, they, they just paint a lot. And so they get used to the characteristics. What is that paper going to do? Um, and... But see how just even like that, it kind of brings a little bit more depth to just our basic drawing. And what do we have? That's the yellow is actually just in between the windows. But what do we care? That green is driving me crazy. I don't <laughs> I guess I don't really use a lot of greens. Um, sometimes when I look back at some paintings, I'm like, what do you have on your palette? Um, I don't know why that is. This is that fan brush that, um, see, we can come in there and add more texture. Um, also, the fan brush is, is good for uh, like little flicky 
areas if, if you just want to kind of shade an area um, there is an amazing plein air um, painter oh, he's probably not just plein air um, Charlie Hunter if you look him up uh, he does this amazing and he all he uses um, basically a mono tone um, monochromatic whatever it, everything's like in sepias and stuff but he has got such emotion in his his um pieces and i i tell you and it, the couple times i've i've seen little snippets of his work um he's one of the people that you know will say i'm i'm lost without my fan brush i thought that's what i heard him say i get an email <laughs> hey i did not say that um <laughs> sorry but um it is funny another thing that uh the pros will mention to you is they say paint with a brush bigger than you need um and that is where you're going to get more of that free artistic brush thing you know if you've ever seen something you think oh that's nice but it, it leaves me flat you know it maybe it was painted so perfectly and, and everything and, and sometimes it's that more natural those brush strokes and things that create its personality um i, I keep looking at this going where are you going with these colors <laughs> <laughs> lovely deb Maybe we need more colored pencil. All right, so this is another thing that I, I was checking out with these colored pencils is I was saying how they, the uh, intensity is, is not real, real strong, but we're not expecting that because it's um, not the most expensive set. But I think it's a very lovely set, and I think it's a good place to, to start and see whether or not it's something that um, works for your temperament. Um, for me, I, I have not worked with this enough to, to say, oh yeah, I love it or I don't. And I'm always curious because some of these work really well, um, uh, if you get them in as they're wet. The, I've got a little bit of a wet on either side here. So, I don't believe that it should cause any issues with the the pencil itself what color did i pull up here um, and this is your color chart so you can do whatever you want to it nobody's going to come and look at it and test it sometimes i will uh check things out like that okay there there it is just dry and if i put a little bit of water on there. Uh, do I want it on? I'll stick it in this cup. Nope, I did not do that. All right. So now I have a wet surface. So see how it's kind of nice how you can draw with it wet also. Um, and the colors are, are so much richer. So the colored pencil is a good way to travel light and still have a lot of options. If you find that you're more comfortable with um, just making your, your line drawing and coloring it in, you can leave it either that way or you can come back and, and add that water later. And don't be afraid to... Um, blend these you can mix and make your own colors um, you can so see this set as I also just received this a, a couple days ago so um, all new new toys and usually what i do when i get new toys is i i just 
kind of start playing with them. I might be working on something else, but then I'll have these little pieces that I, I kind of call them little kickoffs or, or whatever. And it's, it's just, it's all play. And this is how you're going to discover little fun things that you can do um, and that you can create with this and um, that that's why I think these little cards come in really handy too because you kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, here we have that creative card where I was saying so far I wasn't that impressed well not I wouldn't say I, I wasn't impressed I just I was learning the limits of the paper that's kind of what you you need to do because it, it might not work that great for one use but for another use you'll love it so for this if I take a little bit of, of water on here give myself a bead um, I can play with these colors and, and just see well what happens if I'm on the dry paper and then what happens over here. See now, now you start to to have a little fun um, where that, that color just comes right to life. And so you, you think, oh, well gee, maybe I'll draw out my painting and then I'll add this. And then it's well then what happens if I draw everything first and here's my little house and so what happens if I take my wet brush and then come in does it change it totally or or what kind of variances there. I guess it, it, it could go either way. I guess it is a little richer if you're re-dissolving it. But I don't think those are bad strengths of color um, for the ability of the set. So see, now I'll have to do a couple pieces with this and just see what happens, you know, because it, it does look totally, to me, it looks totally different if it's dry or if, if it's wet. And working with any of this stuff, it, it's just a matter of working with it, um, getting used to what the colors are in your pockets. Because as I said, I do these kind of color switch swatches. I am looking for the characteristics of some of these pigments, or for the pigments. Um, sometimes I'm like, find me an ice cream. Um, I'm looking, I saw one artist that went more in values and that's nice. But, um, for me, I, I like to do it more in a, a just kind of freehand to see what, what will the, the paint do. I know what, that I can build this up myself. Um, and I know as long as I know where my pure, pure strength is, what, what that looks like. For me, that's what works best. I also will go back into the card and I will lift it because some colors will stain and others won't. So it's good to get to know um, some of the characteristics and and things and and there's a lot of stuff out there as far as like the minerals and and just colors but when and when I was swatching all these and as you can see you kind of I went on a, a buying jag actually when I started painting again because I really didn't re know what I should buy at that point I had been away from painting for so long I thought and I used to always paint with a very limited palette. Um, I, uh, Andrew Wyeth is one of my favorites and, and he was a, a limited palette person. So that when I first started painting, plus it was so much cheaper. I had my, my Burt Sienna, my Indigo Prussian or, or whatever I used. I used very few and um, 
my instructor actually didn't care for my work because I usually painted very dark and he was a very fluffy light person and <laughs> so we kind of <laughs> um, but um, you don't have to have a, a million colors in order to get started or, or to do any and this is is what's good um, you know even just pick out a few of your favorite colors to work with and go for it 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 um, you know it'll grow on you and you I think there's a lot of fun in characteristic in in them they're just, uh, you know, if you had gone to the diner and, and ate that day and that was your, you're keeping a journal in, uh, which I, I admire people that can sit and journal while they're on vacations. Cause usually I'm, I'm too busy looking at stuff, you know? So I, I take pictures and then I, I kind of revisit those places through my paintings. And, and that's the other part that's fun about painting, or I'm always telling people that, um, like when I work on a, a human portrait or, or a person or an animal, I always feel connected to that. And it, painting can take you back into those spaces and to those places. At least for me, I always feel some kind of connection. So it's, it's special and it's fun. So thank you very much. Where can people find you on the web? Oh, people, you can find me at Deborah bottomly.com d-e-b-o-r-a-h b-o-t-t-o-m-l-e-y dot com never bottomly and if you're in the Framingham area um on a little known park in Roosevelt Park off of Faye Street you can go and look at my little public um artwork which is one of those big fiberglass hearts and you will see my little cartooning done, all outlined with this cute little brush here. And that was all done in acrylics. So, um, but yeah, come and see me at, at um, DeborahBottomly.com. And hopefully we'll do more of these tapes and things. And, and you'll start seeing and hearing more from me. We'll get to that saran wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs>